Hello, my name is Justin Wood, and I direct the Building a Mind Lab at Indiana University. Today, I'd like to tell you about our research reverse engineering the origins of visual intelligence. We integrate ideas from developmental psychology, vision science, computational neuroscience, and artificial intelligence in order to understand how newborn brains learn to perceive and understand the world. Our goal is to address one of the great unsolved mysteries in science. What are the origins and computational foundations of intelligence? How do we build machines that learn like newborn brains? These questions are certainly not new. Questions that concern the origins of the mind are at the heart of many fields, including philosophy, psychology, biology, neuroscience, and artificial intelligence. However, despite widespread interest in this topic, there is very little consensus about even the most fundamental questions concerning the origins of intelligence. Given the widespread interest, why don't we yet have a strong theoretical understanding about such an important question? I believe that three major barriers have hindered progress. First, newborn subjects are hard to study. The available methods for studying newborn subjects are low-powered and produce noisy measurements. So these methods don't produce accurate benchmarks for building computational models of the origins of intelligence. The second barrier is that most newborn animals can't be raised in strictly controlled environments from birth. As a result, we can't control and manipulate the training data that shapes newborn brains. Training data plays a central role in shaping both biological and artificial neural networks. So if we want to directly compare learning across biological and artificial brains, we need to give them the same set of training data. The third barrier is that most computational models are disembodied. The models receive input passively. In contrast, animals have bodies and they choose their own input during development through active exploration. So to directly compare learning across biological and artificial agents, we need to embody computational models and allow those models to choose their own curriculum during learning. In this talk, I'll explain how we are now positioned to overcome these three barriers. We can use animal models and automation to overcome the first barrier, we can use controlled rearing and virtual reality to overcome the second barrier. And we can build embodied pixels to actions artificial agents, and then use those agents as computational models of cognitive development. More specifically, our experimental system contains two components. A controlled rearing component for collecting detailed behavioral data from newborn chicks raised in virtual reality environments, and an artificial intelligence component that allows us to raise artificial agents in the same virtual reality environments as newborn chicks. Critically, new the newborn chicks and the artificial agents receive the same set of training data, so we can directly compare their learning abilities. This creates a closed loop experimental system for studying the origins of visual intelligence. The data from newborn chicks provide high precision benchmarks for building pixels to actions artificial agents that learn like newborn brains. And the artificial agents serve as computational models for formalizing the core learning mechanisms in newborn brains. Let me start by telling you about the controlled rearing component of our research. We obtain fertilized eggs, we incubate the eggs in darkness, and then when the chicks hatch, we move the chicks to the controlled rearing chambers, again in complete darkness. To show you our controlled rearing setup, I'm going to take you on a short virtual tour of our lab. Each of these boxes is a controlled rearing chamber, and our lab currently has 60 automated controlled rearing chambers, so we can test a large number of subjects at once. 
To give you a sense of the chambers, we can fly into one of the chambers. We can then rotate around and close the door. And then we can move around the chamber. As you can see, these environments are strictly controlled. The only objects that the chicks see are the virtual objects that we project on monitors situated on opposite sides of the chambers. So we have complete control over all of the chicks' visual experiences with objects. So far, most of our work has focused on object perception. Specifically, we focused on how newborn animals build their first object concept before they've acquired any other visual experiences with objects. Next, I'll briefly show you a few of our findings demonstrating, first, that high-level vision can develop rapidly in newborn brains, and second, that the development of high-level vision requires experience with a naturalistic visual world. The first step of object perception is visual parsing, the task of segmenting objects from complex natural backgrounds. To explore the origins of visual parsing, we raise chicks in an environment containing a single object on a single background. So this was the entirety of the chicks' training data with objects. We then tested whether the chicks successfully parsed the object from the background by testing whether they could recognize the, their imprinted object across novel backgrounds. If the chicks successfully parsed the object from the background, then they should have spent more time on the side of the chamber with their imprinted object versus a novel object. We found the chicks can recognize their imprinted object across novel backgrounds, even if their training data consisted of a single object on a single background. So newborn chicks can perform one-shot visual parsing segmenting objects from complex natural backgrounds. However, we also found that the development of this ability requires motion cues. When chicks were raised with a moving object, they developed object parsing. But when chicks were raised with a stationary object, the chicks failed to develop object parsing. So motion cues drive the development of object parsing in newborn animals akin to young human infants and newly sighted blind patients who also rely heavily on motion cues to develop object perception. We've also explored how newborn chicks develop view invariant object recognition. We raise chicks in a world containing a single object moving through a limited viewpoint range. We then tested whether the chicks could recognize the object across novel viewpoints. Despite receiving training data of just a single object, the chicks successfully learned to recognize objects across novel viewpoints. So chicks are capable of one-shot view invariant object recognition. We also developed a new chronometry method for measuring the speed of object recognition in chicks. And we found that chicks can recognize objects rapidly within just 125 milliseconds. So newborn chicks can develop rapid and invariant object recognition from minimal training data, suggesting that core object recognition can be present and functional within the first days of life. Again, however, we found that this ability only develops when chicks receive experience with naturalistic visual objects. When chicks are raised with objects that move slowly and smoothly over time, the chicks develop abstract, invariant object representations that generalize across novel viewpoints. But when chicks are raised with objects that move non-smoothly over time, or with objects that move too quickly, the chicks fail to develop object recognition. So slow and smooth object motion appears to optimize newborn brains for object recognition, which is consistent with predictive coding models in computational neuroscience. Finally, we've studied how object permanence develops in chicks. We raise chicks in a world that contained a single object that moves smoothly around the chamber. This object never disappeared behind another object. So this environment provided no experience with object occlusion. We then tested whether the chicks could remember the location of the object after it disappeared from view. We then measured whether the chicks spent more time by the correct screen versus the incorrect screen. Here's the data from one of our experiments. 
As you can see, newborn chicks are able to remember the location of an object for up to two minutes, with particularly strong performance during the first one minute or so after the object disappeared from view. This suggests that chicks are capable of one-shot learning of object permanence, even after being raised in a world that provided no experience with object occlusion. However, like the development of object parsing and object recognition, we also found that the development of object permanence requires experience with objects moving smoothly over time. Newborn chicks need to see objects moving smoothly across their eyeball in order to develop object permanence. So overall, we're seeing two main patterns. The first pattern is that newborn brains can develop high-level object perception rapidly from sparse visual input. Newborn chicks are capable of one-shot visual parsing, one-shot view invariant object recognition, and one-shot learning of object permanence. The second pattern is, in, is that in order for high-level vision to develop, newborn brains need experience with a slow and smooth visual world. Natural visual experience provides the training data needed to develop object perception. Our next goal is to formalize the learning mechanisms that underlie object perception, and specifically, we want to build artificial brains that learn like newborn brains. So now I'm going to provide a brief overview of the artificial intelligence component of our research. Since our studies with chicks depend on imprinting, our first step was to build artificial agents that develop imprinting behavior using self-supervised learning mechanisms. To do so, we built artificial brains with two components, a policy network that selected actions based on perceived sensory states, and a curiosity network that produced intrinsic rewards based on prediction errors. The curiosity network learned to make predictions about future observations based on the current observation and action. And the prediction error was provided to the policy network as an intrinsic reward. We then embedded this artificial brain in artificial chick bodies, and then raised 10 of these agents together in a realistic virtual reality world. Like real chicks, our artificial agents received raw visual inputs and performed actions. So these are pixels to actions agents. The video on the top shows a first-person perspective from one of the agents, and the video on the bottom shows a bird's-eye view from, uh, of all of the agents. Remarkably, we found that the agents spontaneously develop ego motion, object attention, object recognition, and grouping behavior. So these artificial agents develop the same kind of imprinting behavior that we see in newborn chicks. This experiment provides a computational proof that two learning mechanisms, deep reinforcement learning and curiosity-driven learning, are sufficient to generate core visual behaviors without these abilities needing to be hardwired into the brain. Now that we have artificial agents that can imprint, we're now starting to train and test the agents in virtual controlled rearing chambers so we can ensure that the artificial agents and the newborn chicks receive the same set of training data. Again, these artificial agents spontaneously learn to imprint, as shown on the video on the left, and the agents spontaneously develop object recognition, as shown in the video on the right. So we're now ready to compare newborn chicks and artificial agents across the hundreds of controlled rearing experiments that we've already performed in the lab. To encourage other researchers to use our benchmarks, we're building a public origins of intelligence testbed. Researchers will be able to download our environments, plug their own artificial brains into the agent using the OpenAI gem wrapper, and then test whether their artificial brains learn like newborn brains. Using a score scoreboard, we'll keep track of which model best accounts for the development of high-level vision. So with this testbed, we can directly compare different formalized theories of the origins of visual intelligence. Ultimately, our goal is to build integrative models of cognitive development that can explain how a wide variety of abilities develop. So in the future, we'll extend this approach to intuitive physics, intuitive psychology, numerical cognition, navigation, and auditory cognition. 
So thank you so much for your time. And if you are interested in learning more about our research, feel free to send me an email. You can also check out our website.